You know, the, the rules are the rules and the laws are the laws and unfortunately, you know, there are people that are suffering that would rather not suffer. And it's not even the suffering, it's, it's all that money is going to waste. I mean, that could be being used to maybe find the cure for the cancer and so forth, right. rather than, than, than making me stay alive when I don't want to and costing the taxpayers. Right. Well, as Reed mentioned, or the it's estate, insurance companies whatever. too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, caller. That was a very, uh, a very pertinent question and a very, uh, very well put uh, contribution to the discussion. Well, thank you very much. And uh, in the meantime, while you have your animals, love them, care for them, and, and cherish them because they add a lot to, to, to people's lives. They sure do. Good point. Uh, okay, and, thank you. And, and they bite intruders. <laughs> <laughs> well, my cat hasn't ever been an intruder yet, but hey, who knows? It might be coming. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Dollar. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's an interesting question, I must say. Uh, um. Uh, no, I don't. Don't uh, blame me for not getting deeply involved in that one. <laughs> um, I'd like to yeah. say one thing. Sure. Um, we have a, a wonderful dog at the shelter who spent his first five years tied out, and because of that, his muscles have atrophied, and he has a hard time walking. So, if you tie your dog out, please make sure that you get him exercise and walk him. Otherwise, he'll atrophy, and it's it's just a sad, tragic situation for them. There are different yeah. kinds of leashes for walking dogs. Uh, what, what do you what do you do you have any preferences on those? I see some have big spikes on them, so that they buy. You know, if the dog doesn't follow you, <laughs> oh, it, the, uh, the it chokes him. Oh, the Yeah, if he's stronger than you are, you might want to use that. Cause <laughs> cause you do have to be the one uh -huh. in control. Yeah. Um, but you also have retractable leashes, and they'll go just so far. We at the shelter usually use just regular leashes, mm -hmm. but um, there are different dogs with very narrow heads need a narrow collar, one that will not come off the head. So, you know, that's something you have to measure and ask at the shelters or um, at, at the pet stores so you find the right equipment for your dog. Okay. Um, harnesses also work. What's that? Go ahead. Harnesses will also work okay. for the dog that will pull. Uh huh. So and it doesn't choke him. It doesn't hurt him. No. no. The harness. I see. There's one advertised on TV. It's a sort of universal harness mm -hmm. gadget that you put on your dog. Um, so you have 14 dogs. Is that about your limit? Is it? Um, we have room for a couple of more, and that that it will be on our stray side when the the dog control officer would bring them in. How many do you put through a year? Three. About 300. 300 dogs a year. Yes. Holy mackerel, Andy! Yes. I didn't realize there's that many. Yes. Oh boy, this guy, <laughs> this beauty here is gonna be gone in a wink. Old Fido here. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Anybody who wants to uh, adopt one of these beautiful animals, uh, or come down and pick one out and talk to them for a while, they get a chance to sit down and talk to them. Oh don't yeah. They? And oh yes. Get to know them a little bit. Yeah. Get to yeah. We encourage the whole family to come down. Uh huh. Any mm. other animals that are in the home, the children. You Bring know. the cat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, so they, you know, so we know that it's the right fit. Uh -huh. One of my cats uh, that I adopted, um, the, his name was Tigger, and he spent some time at your shelter back when you had a cat. Mm -hmm. And then you decided that when you didn't have cats anymore, he was going to be your regular cat. You need a cat around to check the dogs out. <laughs> well, yes. that's what Binks is for now. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. Tigger... Uh, first of all, he'd come to my house and he was starving. He was just literally starving. And it turns out some people threw a whole litter of cats out when they, they moved. They just threw them on the street. They do that. And Tigger yes. was very affectionate. And uh, I, I put out some cat food for him and just snarfed down a whole can of it. And I realized he, he was really in trouble. But we really didn't. We already had three cats and uh, two cats. And uh, my wife insisted she she like a cat, but you know, after you go beyond the two cat stage, you become weird. You know, you, you become the cat lady now. Cat you know? collector. <laughs> so uh, we didn't adopt him. But we we kept him. You know, for, we fed him, and then he he started coming into the house. Uh, we have a cat trap. Uh, don't don't listen to that cat people. Um, <laughs> and we never lost a cat. And we've had a lot of cats uh, on the road. We train them beforehand to steer clear of the car. Anyway. Tigger started coming in. Next thing you know, he, he was just living there. And so I told my wife, all right, we'll take him down to the shelter. They're pretty good, and they owe me one anyway. <laughs> so took him over to your shelter, and you adopted him, took him over. 
but we still loved that cat a little bit, and we took him a little treats and visited oh. him every week oh, or two, and uh, he was very unhappy. And so finally, I threw in the towel. And we adopted <laughs> Tigger. <laughs> and broke Tigger, down. Tigger was the most affectionate, <laughs> sweet cat. And uh, then the story goes: uh, one day he went missing uh, around Christmas. And then my daughter announced they found Tigger by the side of the road on, uh, near Pearl Street in Westfield. He'd been killed. He was in a snowdrift. And oh, the tears. Everybody loved Tigger. Because Tigger was unusual in the fact that he, he was a roamer. He'd been wild pretty much for a year, you know. Mm -hmm. And he, he would go from house to house. Each house was a room in his big house. And everybody in there was a friend. So if you <laughs> left your door open or something, Tigger wound up in your house. So everybody knew him and loved him. Exactly. And so the cries and the t people broke down and cried when they were told that uh, Tigger had right. passed away. And it was a very sad day. And uh, we had uh, we built a little shrine for Tigger because he was such a loving one, <laughs> <laughs> and smart and everything. And uh, then we went camping and we buried him. We took him. We have a special cat cemetery. Took him up to the hill and buried him. And put his. We have a. Uh, we have put a name tag on him with a copper pipe and a whole schmear. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the family comes up and their flowers and prayers and tears and that's it. So then we went camping. Uh, seven months later, and I came home, and right where he sits is Tigger. Oh, wait a minute, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> and uh, my wife said, well, it can't be Tigger. Uh, it looks like Tigger, though, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I uh, checked with a, a neighbor across said, no, it's a female, and Tigger was a male. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, so at any rate, we, uh, we took care of the, this new cat for a while. A new cat seemed awfully strange, because Tigger had a habit of jumping up on my lap and, and nosing my mouse when I was working the computer. <laughs> And this cat did the same thing as all we've we, we been trained, you know. Uh -huh. Well, you'd done a portrait of Tigger. Somebody over there took a beautiful photograph of him, all semi-reclining. Uh, it was just lovely. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find the thing, though. But eventually, we decided we have to try to place Tigger. And you wouldn't take cats at that point. So we took it down to Jamestown on Strunk Street there, and, oh, yeah. uh, to the uh, Humane Society. And they called back the next day and said, you know, this, this female cat's not a female, it's a male. It's about three years old, and it seems to have had its shots. Well, that was a da absolute, uh, that was Tigger, you know? Oh, wow. And so then I found the photograph, and uh, I compared it to the face that I'd taken of Tigger, the, the new cat. It was identical. And you know, tiger cats, they have this, it's like a fingerprint on their face. Yeah. It was Tigger! So I raced back down, and every time I adopt a cat, I, I give a general donation, a nice donation to the shelter. And I'd already given you guys one and adopted Tigger from you. And then I go down and readopt Tigger oh my uh, and take care of them down at the other shelter. And you know, it's the only cat has ever been readopted by the same family from two different shelters. I know. And reincarnated. Yeah, yes. and reincarnated. Yes. So we found out that someone had a, had a similar cat, identical cat, down the street. And apparently what had happened was uh, the Tigger had appeared at their door when their cat went missing, got killed, and they assumed it was their cat and took him in and oh kept my. him inside for seven months. Oh, no. That's the only conceivable thing that could have happened, you know. That is wild. Because it was Tigger. Oh There's no question about it. <laughs> so at any rate, you had Tigger for a while. And uh, <laughs> now you got some great dogs over there. Yeah, now, they're wonderful. Uh, my little story took about five minutes out of your time. <laughs> so no, that's fun. It's a great story. It yes. <laughs> All right. Um, we love happy endings. Yeah. That was a happy ending. <laughs> yeah. Although we do have a lot of kitties buried up at the cemetery, mm. and each one has its own little marker, grave marker, and everything. We're, we're serious about our cats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Should be. Why that's not? Right. They're part of the family. <laughs> And dogs, I might add. Yeah. I always had a dog when I was young, but we couldn't have a dog because I had a, a daughter who has a hair allergy and, and dandelion. Oh. And she just, she, dogs and cats, we couldn't have had, had any pets. We, well, she now has uh, children and they want pets, so they have an iguana. <laughs> <laughs> Furless. <Yeah. laughs> That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're kind of running down on time. Uh, tell us a little bit about dog care and dog management. You must know an awful lot about that. Uh, what do you feed dogs? They tell me they tell me you can you can't eat dog food. Uh, seniors are going to be eating cat and dog food shortly <laughs> because they have this Congress is yeah. ruthlessly starving them to death mm. by not giving them their cola, the real cola. Yeah. But uh, they say you can't eat dog food because it has ground bone in it, and people cannot digest bone. Dad's is the least nutritionally dense. Uh huh. 
Uh, Purina, they recommend. They recommend Beneful. Um, there's some other brand names that Lynn Marie. You know, there's know. also you can go with the higher end with the IMS and the Pro Pack. Um, now we talking about kibbles or uh, canned yes, food? Yes, just kibble. This would be this Both. would be dry food. Uh -huh. We feed ours at the shelter. We feed them a a quality food um, with a spoon of wet in it, just to give it a little extra. Um, and, and of course, there's treats involved too. Um, also, and the other um, care would be, you know, the ears, um, <coughs> cleaning of the ears grooming, brushing. As you can see, I'm a little filled with hair right now. <laughs> so Maddie could use a nice brushing. Mm -hmm. um, bathing your dog, not often though, because um, you want the natural oils to help keep his, his coat nice. Um, other care would be, you know, exercise, especially in the young ones, because if you don't exercise a dog, they will be destructive because they just have so much pent up energy that they need. They'll, they'll to get eat out. your shoes. Yes, they will, and other <laughs> other assorted things also. Uh -huh. um, the other oh, one other thing I wanted to mention too, very important with our shelter, we have a sponsoring program um, for ten dollars a month. You can sponsor a dog. Um, we have quite a few sponsors that will sponsor a whole kennel for a year and um, you get a picture of the dog and the voice of the dog, our writer is the voice of the dogs, and you get updates and pictures and, and let you know when your dog is adopted and then we'll switch you over to another dog that is in need. So that's a nice little program. Um, there are a few people that do it for their grandchildren and their nieces and nephews and you know it's, it's well welcomed with them. And of course it benefits the dogs. Yeah, um, I got a notice uh, from somebody, I guess, is that uh, it's nice to leave some dough to them when you pass on, too. Yes, well, it is. You're not going to do it. You're not going to use it now. No. <laughs> your, your, guy, your, your kids are, are, are always been ingrates and naughty, so you give them to the, <laughs> <laughs> give them to the shelter, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I, uh, this, this notice just came out. We're out of here. Oh, okay. I, I'll give you each 30 seconds to kind of close okay. up, okay? Uh, Go this ahead, afternoon we're having open house from noon to 3. What's the date? Make sure they know that. Uh, today. Today is yes, the date of the, what's the uh, date? 21st, May 21st. May 21st. Remember, people watch this all week and they may go oh, down and be okay. watching on Tuesday. Okay. They'll say, oh, well, let's go down there. Oh, all right. Tell us again. May 21st, noon to 3, open house at the Canine Rescue on Gale Street in Westfield. Uh -huh. And then it's every third Saturday of each month. Open house. Now, uh, what's that mean? If you if you drop by, they'll give you a dog or what? <laughs> if you want one, we you certainly one? will. But you could come in and you know uh -huh. check and see if the dog fits for you and for uh -huh. your family. Fill out an application. Our volunteers will be there to help you. Um, there's plenty of dogs that would love the attention and love to just see you come down what, and what talk if, to what, them. For what a if while. they come in and say, "I haven't got the money. I haven't got the money. What do, what do you do then?" Hmm. You give it to them, don't you? You find, that would find be, one of your sponsors. That would be in a perfect world, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we do need to help our costs uh, with okay. our dogs. Well, thank you. I appreciate you, uh, Lynn Marie and Mo, coming along and helping thank us out. Thank you. Will they meet you if they go to the shower? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they will, okay. And again, the phone number is 326-PAWS. Right. PAWS, right. like, the, like the, the paw, you know. Okay. And visit our website at www caninerescue.org. Okay, well thank you very much for joining us and giving up your Saturday morning and taking thank care you. of these beautiful dogs who have joined us and mm -hmm. made our uh, morning just a little nicer. Thank you for having us. So our caller, the last caller, uh, we'll catch you next time. Okay, we do the show you. every year. Okay. <laughs> All right, Chuck Kelsey, I want to thank you. What a guy, what a job he's done. <laughs> Devin Taylor, Chris Burt, Randy Burt, uh, Chris Ramaker, Jeff Zook, Don Zenz, and John Hamels, and last but not least, loud and clear. <laughs> Dan Bird. Okay, there you go. So now we got everybody. And I want to thank a, a, a special guest over here, uh, Galen, who's helping us out too. Galen Zook. We got two Zooks on the scene here. Uh, may all that is proud and true and noble abide with you. I'm appreciating your coming here and joining us, and we'll see you next week. And build up to a very, very happy, important, wonderful memory Memorial Day coming up soon. We'll see you next week. I'm Reed Powers.